Identifying the binyan. The Hebrew word binyan means building or construction. In Biblical Hebrew grammar, a binyan is a way that a verb root can be built or constructed to give it a particular meaning. This video will show you how to identify the binyan of a verb in one of the five most common binyanim kal, nifal, pl, hifil, or hispal. To identify the binyan of a verb, we need to complete three stages. First find the root, then find the tense, and then you will be in a position to identify the binyan. It is important to complete all three stages in the process, as skipping a stage can lead you to the wrong binyan. You can remember the three stages as RTB, root, tense, binyan, or rock the boat. To identify the root, look carefully at the letters in the verb to work out which letters are part of the root and which are prefixes and suffixes. More than half of the letters in the Hebrew alphabet cannot be prefixes or suffixes, and so must always be root letters. Once you have identified which letters are root letters, you might need to add one or occasionally even two missing letters to complete the root. In the verb Vayishlach, the Vav and the Yud are both prefixes. The remaining letters are Shin Lamed Ches, the root to send. In the verb olu, the vav is a suffix. The remaining letters are ayin and lamed. Thinking about the possible missing letters, yud, vav, nun, or he, you find the common root ayin, lamed, he to go up. If you identify the root and you realise that the first root letter is missing, you will need to put the missing first root letter back into the word in order to identify the binyan correctly. Write the word out again and insert the missing first root letter with a shava under it. The root of the word yipol is nun pe lamad. The first root letter nun is missing. In order to identify the binyan correctly later, write the word out again, inserting the missing nun and placing a shavar underneath it. A quick way to identify the tense is to look at the first root letter. If there is an etan prefix, alef yud, tof, or nun, before the first root letter, the tense is imperfect. This rule always applies if the prefix is alef, yud, or tof. If the prefix is a nun, you need to check for a perfect tense suffix. If there is no etan prefix in front of the first root letter, the tense is perfect. The verb vayishlach has an etan prefix yud before the first root letter, so the tense is imperfect. The verb olu has no prefix before the first root letter, so the tense is perfect. If there are any additional prefixes that are not part of the perfect or imperfect tense, you should ignore them. In the word vayishlach, the prefix vav is a vav conversive and is not part of the imperfect tense. It can be ignored. Once you have found the root and the tense, it is time to identify the binyan. You will use specific letter and vowel patterns to help you identify the binyan. These patterns are different for the imperfect and perfect tenses. In the perfect tense, the pattern for identifying the binyan follows the Hebrew name for the different binyanim. The kal pattern is po'al, the nifal, nifal, then pl, hifil, and hispa'al. Notice how the only difference between the name of the binyan and the examples in the example 1 column is that the root letters are different. All other letters and vowels are identical. Nislach and nifal have the same nun prefix and the same vowels, just a different root. In the example 2 column, it is a little more difficult, as the verb patterns are not identical to the binyan name pattern. However, each example shares its very beginning with the binyan name pattern, and this is its defining characteristic which will always be present. The kal will have a komatz under its first root letter, the nifal a prefix nun, the pl will have a chirik under its first root letter, the hifil a prefix he, and the hispa'al a prefix his. Once you have learned these patterns, you can identify the binyan of nearly any perfect verb. In the imperfect tense, the pattern for identifying the binyan follows the infinitive construct pattern for the different binyanim. The kal pattern is lishmor, the nifal hishamer, the pl ledaber, the hifil hamlich, 
and the Hispael His Kadesh. Since the imperfect begins with eight unprefixes, the eight unprefix will take the place of the first letter of the infinitive construct pattern. Notice how the only difference between the binyan name and the examples in the example 1 column is that the root letters and aton prefix are different. All other letters and vowels are identical. Le Daber and Negadel have exactly the same vowels, just a different root and a different prefix. In the example 2 column it is a little more difficult, as the verb patterns are not identical to the infinitive construct pattern. However, each example shares its very beginning with the binyan name pattern, and this is its defining characteristic which will always be present. The first two vowels of each binyan pattern, and the extra tof of the hispa'al. Once you have learned these patterns, you can identify the binyan of nearly any imperfect verb. A verb which does not fit with any of these rules will nearly always be kal. Three examples are shavnu, we returned, ya'amdu, they will stand, and eileich, I will go. You should also know these rules about strong dogesh and binyanim. Piel, Pu'al and Hisba'al have a dogesh in their second root letter. This dogesh is characteristic of these binyanim. Nifal has a dogesh in the first root letter of the imperfect pattern, to compensate for the missing prefix nun of the nifal. Now pause the video and try to identify the binyan of each of these verbs. Here are the correct answers. The defining vowel or letter pattern for each binyan has been highlighted. In summary.